Okay, we're going to get started. We're going to start with just a really brief introduction. Uh, my name is Brennan. I'm captain of the Warlords. I'm co-captain with the many, many co-captains of Dominance. Uh, we're just going to introduce all of our instructors here. Uh, so I'm Brett Skinner. I'm the head instructor for the Warlords and on the, the Dominance. Uh, I'm, I'm Joseph Brandt. Uh, I am a Dominus fighter. I also fight with a local team in Santa Barbara, California called the Soldados. What's up, everybody? Johnny Porter, member of Dominus. And uh, the fight since the, the Iron Phoenix days in the Battle of the Nations. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have a new team, the Vagabonds in Seattle. <laughs> Look them up. Young boys. Uh, oh, Jake Taylor from Australia. Uh, I'm team captain of uh, Team Krakens and then also co-captain of Dominus. Also captain of Dominus. Uh, I'm Adam Harrigan. Uh, I'm also a member of the Warlords. I'm a business instructor sometimes at the academy. Uh, and uh, I'm a member of Dominus. I've been through it for four years. Uh, Alright, cool, awesome. Introductions out of the way. Fantastic. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about the rules of the rail. This is going to be real, real brief. The reason that we're talking about this is that everything else we're going to do today assumes that you are properly utilizing the rail. Okay? So, first rule of the rail, if you are not physically putting weight on the rail, you are not on the rail. If I am standing here, even though I am touching the rail, I am not on the rail. You can still trick me, I can still fall. Okay? I'm making a triangle between my outer rear leg, my ribs, and my elbow. I am on the rail. At this point, I am very, very hard to take down. You can take me backwards, you can take me that way, you can't really take me forward, you can't take me this way. So it already limits my opponent's ability to do anything just by placing weight on the rail. Right, and this is like, this is a very basic concept, very important. Realize that the only way that he can be thrown is away from the rail, right? The rail supports him. So by leaning his weight into the rail, he is leaning his weight away from the only place he can be thrown. He this is already is, much harder to be thrown. And this leg is totally superfluous, right? I don't have to have it. So if I get caught in a front leg pinch or something, okay, whatever. Second thing, I'm keeping this leg out of combat, okay? If I bring this leg forward, it doesn't even have to be past this leg. But just if it comes about parallel or a little behind, this leg is now open to attack. There's times when you want to do this when you're doing your own bullshit, but generally speaking, this leg should be back. The toes of this leg should be behind the heels of this leg. This kind of puts it out of reach. Once again, reasoning for this is the exact same. If he's going to be taken this way, he needs this foot to stop him. If this foot is exposed and I can attack it, it makes it much easier for me to take him in the easiest way I can take him. Can I say one thing about this? When he has his foot back, essentially right now his back is to the rail. As soon as he steps forward with this foot, his back is now open to the field. Okay, so his natural reaction if he gets pushed now is not falling onto the rail, it's falling down. And then the final part of this, and this is the one that we probably see uh, people violate pretty often, is they'll have a good position here, they're on the rail, they'll have a good position there, that's backwards, and then they'll overreach with this arm. If this elbow comes past your torso pretty much, I can now get that leg and I can control your body, I can pull you off the rail here. This arm can fight here, that's perfectly cool. This arm can even do this, but if I reach, he gets to attack, okay? So unless you're actively doing something and you've got a plan, this arm should not be out here. Keep this elbow kind of tucked in a little bit, right? If someone grabs it, and this is super common, if you engage any of us on Dominus, one of the first things you're gonna try and do, can I have this? You gonna give this to me? And if you'll give this to us, we can do all sorts of nasty things, okay? Don't let us have this, don't let your opponents have this. Keep it tucked in. If I pull it, you pull it away from me, you pull it back, you disengage, okay? So again, three things, real simple. First, lean on the rail. Second, put back. Third, rear hand, don't over engage. All right. From there, we're going to move straight into talking about the Asoto, which is one of the most basic attacks that we do. And uh, the correct position to defend from it is to remember your rules of the rail. So, yes. Uh, so, going over Asoto, this is by far my best attack, but it, a lot of us use it right now. Uh, something is important with these new rails. 
I believe a Soto is just the best attack in the sport right now, and it is the most important one to have. It used to be rail throw back when you could hook, right? We would do, you know, hook. Without this hook, this throw is not nearly as strong as it used to be. And it becomes much more impor important to have a Soto in your game, all right? Now, when I show it, you all probably know a Soto. I'm gonna show you. You all probably know this attack. Uh, a Soto Gari or a Soto Atoshi is the judo name for it, which is why I call it that, right? I'm just going to attack, right? Everyone's probably seen this, learned some version of this, right? I want to talk a little bit about how to make this really effective. So, the first things I'm going to look for for setting this up is someone breaking the rules of the ring. All right. If he is off, if this foot comes forward, boom, easy. It's time to go. Right. If he just stands up off the rail, you don't have to bring this forward. Just come up off the rail. Then easy. I know I can drive this way to finish. If he is extending his arm, boom, so I can push like this. I know I can hit. Right. So I'm gonna go over how to do the move itself, but understand. I set this up by making people break the rules of the rail. All right? So, most important parts of this, all right? Uh, I need to lock down somewhere on his torso or head with this arm, all right? So, when I say lock down, as I come in, I'm going to kind of curl and try to attach him to my body. I'm not going to keep my arm out here because it becomes very weak, right? So we'll do from head right now. When I do this, as I step forward, I want to attach him to my shoulder so that when I go forward, his head comes with me. Same thing if I'm under, boom. When I go, I'm gonna pull him into me. So, <coughs> my body's pushing forward and I never get in this situation. And trying to finish with my shoulder back. Okay? Lead with your body. What? With their lead, body. Lead with your body. Yes, lead with your body, but connect them to your body so that when your body goes, they go. You don't leave them behind and then try to bring them forward. We go together. Second big thing, this leg, it never steps down behind their foot. It never does this. You will get countered and you lose your strength. You only have this leg, all right? I want to make sure I'm using both my legs at all times. So initial reach and grab outside and I'm going to pull myself forward until I can push forward off of that leg, all right? That foot goes down on this side of his foot. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. What happens there is when he's, when he's kind of behind my knee or behind my calf, I can't, I can't pick this up and I can't generate any force. His leg is down, I can generate a lot of force. But the way he's doing it, I'm just stuck here. <coughs> right? This is going to allow you to pull yourself into the attack. And this will also turn their knee in, which allows it to lose strength. It's actually both more effective and safer on your opponent than when we do this thing. And now I throw, and I'm just blocking the side of the knee. Better chance that I lose and better chance that I injure him, all right? So, when we wrap, boom, we go around side. When I do this, I force that bend, the natural bend of the knee, and they lose the strength, all right? We're bending their knee forward, we're not breaking their knee over, all right? From there, the last important part to make sure that we don't go down with them is we follow up big step. So boom, here, oh, we finish back. That step forward every time, all right? This is what 
make sure that I can finish staying up without any issues. I don't want to go, yeah, and now we both, right? We both fall. So the second this is through, fix that. All right? At this point, if they're still standing, we're going to lift this leg to finish. All right? So, <laughs> now I can work. <laughs> lift to remove the rest. A lot of times you don't need to. You will put them down with the initial step through. But if you're here, boom, and you step through, now we lift to finish that throw. But we have a foot under us for stability. And to be clear, I'm not like going along with this. He's literally just lifting me up off the ground. <laughs> cool. So we're gonna break up and we're gonna play with this one. Um, Any? Do you want to mention not letting them get gripped because you're, you're always controlling yourself? Oh yes, yes, yes. Uh, I, defensively, most important part defensively is I never let my opponent get two strong grips. Right? He can have this one. We'll fight here. He can't have this too. The second this happens, even if I win, we're going. Right? So I always defend the second grip. All right? If they've got a two-handed axe and they go over, boom. I always make sure there's space here. If this closes, then it's Simo. I'm going with him. So always space in between. As long as they don't have two good grips, they can have pretty heavy head control here. I know when I go, I'm gonna slip. All right, so most of the time, not always, most of the time, whichever grip you choose, boom, think frame inside, and when we throw, think kind of tuck it to you. Just hug it. All right, last time, connect to your body. This step steps, pulls, and steps backwards. You don't step down, forward. After this, big step to finish. Does this make sense? Any questions before we split? Uh, this one? So, uh, bring this just a little bit forward. So this, boom, I'm gonna feed back through. Uh, oh, uh, last thing, important mistake. My hips stay behind my shoulders. All right, when I reach for this, hips are behind shoulders. But never... <laughs> Hips come in front of shoulders. If hips even get even with shoulders, it starts to get hard. So if I reach here, I can reach as long as this back here. If I reach like this, I'm losing, right? So hips behind shoulders. I think that's everything. Y'all ready? All right, let's get in a group. Let's split up and play with this a little bit. Uh, if you're the one getting thrown, stand Go ahead and stand flat. So like, this is the rail. If you're getting thrown, just stand here for right now. <laughs> So, you want your Yeah, 
hips behind. Yeah. 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 This so closer than that. Step is okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and just swap on this job. Yeah, just a little Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Just, just, just some things. Same arms. Forward and forward. Yeah, and then sink it. Yep, yeah. and step through. Right, guys, you see. This should be out of the way. This is just like that. This is like that. This is like that. Mm -hmm. So, when you do it here, yeah. it's be careful. You don't have to do under pushing too far right this way. Oh, okay. It's not the on the No, no, no. no. On the outside. You want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. As if, if I do it to you here, if I'm going to come in and it's sort of here, boom, very hard. Yes, your hands. Here we get the way. But if we manage to a little bit more. So you pull him over from the. That's that's the uh, when we come through. Okay. <coughs> okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Lead with your body. Yes. Right. Yeah. A little, you're le little leading with your leg, just a little. So. Swap on, swap on. You, it's good if you break it up just, first just and then start to put it all together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pull in. Yep. 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 Yes. This. <laughs> when you're versing, then, then step this one. Like myself, yeah. Or okay. Sometimes what you're going to do is. Yes. 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 <laughs> yep. Yes, yeah. After that, it's a set. Okay. I'm going to leave you guys to it. Oh. And for this, you know, give him this a leg a little bit more, just so it's, I mean, because normally if you're setting this up and you're trying to do that, you're trying to keep that forward, I'm going to try to pull you to make this happen. Okay. I like this leg. Like, okay, like, I, like I like this leg more forward. You can you can do it all the way through, but if you're starting back and you're here, then we're here, and I might ah no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For learn, just to get this, so it's one technique. Yeah, try it. As a small person, I get tough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So usually we fight without grappling. Yeah. So we're square. No, no. This is yeah. The list is a very important tool. Yeah. I'm not sure where you can. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And still, you use this. This is sort of like defense. You play here. When you go offense, you're going to come off the list. Right. You're going to just to do that. Right. But but here, because when you're defending, right, this is very hard for you to do what I'm showing you trying to do offensively. So this, we're showing you both sides. So a lot of times I'll use the rail. to push yourself.
Football block under the Yeah, you don't have to grab it, but, okay. but you have to yeah. I can do, yeah, so when it comes here, yeah, around. I mean, sometimes they do it for yeah. you, you or they, yeah. they reach and Or I can just, yeah. and then once this pull it through here, okay. Yeah. Easy, easy, easy. 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 Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. gone, so I will just, you can do it But realistically, it's yeah. elbow yeah. So the fan. So you, you grab that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Grab the fan and the elbow. Yeah. Yeah. And you just yeah. 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 Ye
Because I am very fat, and now it's all over my body. Vai sempre stringendo il tuo perché nel momento che lo porto avanti tu puoi fare una spinta e capito Round Robin. No, il round Robin è più bello. Sì, 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 e poi è zero punti in grande, è più grande. In decimo, se è fatto fare che se è un uomo passa di semifinale. Se è fatto, è visto, è stato Penso che sia uguale. No, praticamente
underhook or head control. As we drive, I tell my guys I want elbow to the sky. This helps break whatever their posture is. If it's here, boom, elbow to the sky, breaks this way, boom, here, elbow to the sky, creates this turn, okay? So either attack, didn't say it earlier, as you get better with this, we, but we have to be tight, because if we're loose and we go elbow to the sky, we just lose them, right? They just slip. So tight, once it's tight, when I go in, elbow to the sky forces this turn in their head or turn in their shoulders, which makes everything so much more difficult. It just adds up in breaking their posture. It's the same thing with putting your weight through them. It's just another thing that adds up to break their posture. When their posture is broken, they fall over. So next up, I'm gonna hand it over for 2v1s. Um, I will say real quick, training note. Our team, uh, the way we focus training, we focus on three things more than anything else. So individual skill, we do a lot of 1v1. Our belief is that the number one best thing you can do for your team is be the best individual fighter you can possibly be. If you step onto the field and no one across from the field can beat you in a one-on-one, -on -one, you're probably going to be a very good fighter for your team, right? That's all. The next two, and it is the vast majority of our focus, is 2v1 and 2v2. Every single fight right now in our meta is 2, 1, 2. That means the first 80% of the fight that happens is a 2v2 and a 2v2. We train that 2v2 over and over again. We get on a rail, we take two guys, and we act like it's the beginning of a fight and we focus on being able to win that 2v2. Our belief is if we win the 2v2 on the rail, teams are automatically just not going to be able to beat us. That's 80% of the fight. If we're better at 80% of the fight than everyone else, what are you going to do, right? So 2v2, very important. Next one, almost just important, as important, is the 2v1. When you get up a person, you must be confident and comfortable that you are going to finish that quickly, all right? Having a person up is a huge advantage, but if you do not drill it over and over and over again, it's not nearly the advantage it can. It's not be just not quickly, also has to be quickly and safely. If you turn a 2v1 into one of your guys going down and one of their guys going down, that is an actual loss for your team. They would have been better off doing a 1v1 and having that other guy somewhere else. So, with that being said, we do a lot of training with 2v1. Uh, I'm going to get over to him. The only last thing for how we train, if you're training 2v1, we do essentially zero striking in our 2v1 training. We will do a little. We will have people with two-handers show striking, maybe make the person react to it a little bit, but our rule is their armor is too good. Turns out their armor is so strong. What? Uh, their armor is so strong your striking didn't work because striking is very inconsistent in this sport and it is the problem with it. one you, you can walk up to three guys in a row drop every single one of them with like a one shot and then you come up to the next three and none of them notice you're there and you're like I'm I swear I'm doing the exact same thing right but if I kick a people person's feet out from under him he falls no matter how good his armor is all right, so we do a lot more training with grappling due to the consistency of it, all right? This also means that we can put a person in a 1v2 over and over and over and over again and that person never has fear for his safety. He's never worried some dude's gonna hold him while some dude tees off on him, right? Even with like just wooden halves, like if you're not playing with a head, that shit hurts. Right? It's not, it might not injure you, but it hurts, and you can't expect a person to just be okay getting the shit beat out of them uh, over and over again, right? So, we do almost grappling only in our 2v1 training, maybe some light striking so the person has to learn to deal with it, but never that would even leave a bruise, anything close to a bruise. Right? When, so, training. When, when training. When training. When training. <laughs> when we're hitting you guys. <laughs> So, with that, I'm gonna pass it on. Awesome. So, um, the first thing I'm gonna talk about with uh, the 
2v1 situation. So the setup is, you know, you're over here, you get a kill, right? And now you see two, two fighters here. What not to do, right? So a lot, this happens a lot. We come over, and then we pull, and he's pulling, and we pull, and he's pulling. Is he using any energy? No. no. We're using all of our energy. So it's very important to know how, how I can be most effective in this situation. We're gonna show two, two, there's more than two, but we're gonna show two. The first is the head rip, right? People always see the, the head rip. We have a technique that, that really we think of head rips as a, as a team, as a teamwork. He, um, Brennan, is going to set the head rip up. So as I approach, I'm gonna come from behind. I'm gonna try to be sneaky as possible. I don't want him to know I'm there until, until I'm ready to, to come in. Brennan is going to get this control and pull it in and then push head back, right? So come, come in and yes, there. I'm, gonna, I'm going to come in. I usually will come in because he's trying to defend this, right? He wants, so I come in this hand here, then with my ax here, here, and then when I pull back, I turn into the, I turn him into the rail. If I turn this way, he can step or, or turn. If I turn him this way, he has nowhere to go. Does that make sense to everyone? And so when I'm, when I'm seeing that, that's most often, if they're more sort of facing one another, this is when the head rip is very good for, for you. So if I come in, I can come in from behind, Feet, feet, there, there, now here. And you know, you can start, step back. It's pretty, well, that, with someone helping, it's really pretty easy. Yeah, yep. As a short person, we, we teach a lot. A lot of, if he's smart, if he defends by tucking his head, I can't like, always reach it, right? You come up. My, my ally's gonna feed head, but I'm also going my quad at the back of his ass to push his hips forward and expose his head. So a lot of times we're coming up and I'm just gonna go like this, here, and then our weight is together. And as, as the person who is already here, who is helping to set up for the head rip, I'm pushing his head back. But I have to do it in a very specific fashion or else it just looks like a Three Stooges routine. Wait, that's the idiot. <laughs> If I push his head here, which is what we often see, he can't take him down without also ripping my gauntlet off or taking me down. That's no good. I want to bring my forearm and I want to push under his helmet, just at the chin of his helmet. I'm not like pushing into his neck. I'm not doing anything illegal. I'm just pushing at the bottom of his, hel his helmet, pushing his head up, okay? So forearm, bottom of the helmet, or you can put your shield edge there, whatever you can get under. But the point is, my shit is not up here where if he grabs, he's gonna hook my gauntlet and rip it off. And the reason, so I like either a cross grip or, or like Muay Thai grip. If you, if you bring your hands like this and try to pull your elbows together, not, not easy. This, and so when you are here, you pinch, right? You pinch this and now, now you have, it, right? When, when, or, or that twist, when you're here, which people, this is zombie, right? Ah, yeah. This happens a lot, right? This is not as effective because all of this space means he can slip out. It's very important to realize the best defense to a head rip is this shoulder to that rail. If this shoulder makes it to that rail, they probably don't finish it. And almost every little key that we're showing here is how to make sure that this shoulder doesn't get to that rail. He traps this arm. I can't get it back. He presses there. He gets tight, so my head can't turn. And he begins to twist the opposite direction. And there's no Right? All of these are to stop the one good defense I have, all right? And I can't tell you how important when he talks about tight, if there is one thing that people mess up more than anything else, it's being tight with their hands. They go over like this and they pull. And someone who's good with that much space just goes, and their head turns, dips, and slip. Keep it tight so I can't move my head. Your weapons. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes, yes. Well, so a lot of one-handed X because awesome. you can grab the hat, but there is with the falchion, you can't grab the blade, but you can you can. So I use falchion and I do here this. Or here. No, no. So I do this with my falchion. Yeah. So, so the blade, the blade is is here, and then with that hand there. I can't grab, but I can you can't grab, but you can hook it. And you, because I curl the hand, you can't go up. So you start pulling like this. Okay. And then up. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then I, I personally, I, I use a buckler and an axe, and my buckler, I can put my hand, it's not, the handle allows me to hold my axe and then have a free hand, because sometimes it's easier to, to be on that side or this side. I like to have the versatility. Um, okay, so that's the, the first technique. Um, the second technique we're gonna show, we, we call it the Indiana Jones, but really it's, it's, the, uh, the, it's a headlock, when you see someone in a headlock, how to get them into a, a guillotine, which is front facing instead of back facing, um, and because we think that this is a much more effective kill. Uh, you, to, you can kill in this position much easier than this position. So, oh yeah, yeah. There we go. Right step, here. Never, ever remove pressure from your body. Here, with the Indiana Jones. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it's Temple of Doom, he's like, <laughs> 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 the right? You're going to come to do this. If you have a free hand, you're going to come to go for it. You can, you can. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're saying the call. Oh yeah, and we 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 call this. You say so it's good to be talking, and I'll be like Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones. And then from there, there's things you can do. You can pull forward, you can press the head down, and give them a little under the head. Yes. So as the person who's giving up head control. I have one very important job other than being able to, to move my arm correctly, which is to not leave this position open. If he's knocking this off and I leave here, he leaves with me. I have to stand here until his arm breaks over the control. So I'm, I'm chilling here, I'm putting weight on, I'm helping, he gets full lockup, and then he pulls him back into position away from me. I really don't move until he's got complete dominance. And then maybe I help, maybe I kick a leg, maybe I go somewhere else because he's going to win this eventually. But I must be a physical blocker here until he's got complete control. So I... I Just a question. Uh, if I am the guy in that situation, if a guy is uh, Don't be in that position. <laughs> 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 Fight the hands. So, fight the hands. Generally, if I can get two hands on one piece, if uh, we'll start with the headlock. From here, I'm. This is, and same thing, you know, you get this. Yeah, no, I'm going to put over four. Did you see this? Right. So, if, and if it starts, the second it starts to happen, I go like this, and now this is easy. Like, I can cover here, and whatever's happening, I'll push this, but don't let it, if it locks under, problems. Like, we, big problems. We, we yes. also drill this. But if we we'll, we'll drill this for a minute or so, but we'll start with Brett Duke. So we start like this, and we say, go. Yeah. And this is the drill. Repeat. <laughs> yeah, now switch. Again, again. We start 40 seconds, one person, 40 seconds, the other person. I only want one person to hold them there. And if the person gets free, like, you know, he's on. Like, just free, and he just holds. After that, we say, 
Okay, we start, and now he actually looks for takedown, not just control. He looks for takedown. And this is this is just a good general point, because it's an actual question, how do you stop this, this stuff from happening? Uh, almost always the answer is attack the weakest part, which is almost always the grip. If you can't lock up your grip or you can't get your arm where it needs to be, I probably can't take you down. So if you're just pushing my hand out, it's a good place to start. Um, so we'll, we'll drill this. I will want. I do just want to say, these this teamwork, right? This is so much less energy than me trying to take Brett down by myself. These kills save your team energy, which makes you last longer in a tournament or in a match. So I like these. If you can get, you know, one v one kill or one, you know, set up a two v one. Um, if you can, if you can get these kills more than any kind of kill, you are saving your team energy. So I like to focus on this. Almost like you see, Dominic, we work as a team. It's not I walk out, you walk out. We're all in our own battles. We're, we're walking out and we're looking for a way to make a, a two-on-one happen quickly. Yeah, that's good. What is we got left? Too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we're gonna split up. We're gonna do the head rip. Then we'll do like a real brief reminder of the Indiana Jones. We'll go straight into Indiana Jones. All right? Sound good? Oh, groups, so of groups of three. Groups of three. Oh, groups of three. 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 Head rip. Head rip first. We got one, one, one over here. That's what we're going to do. 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 That's <laughs> you take, take, imagine you're gonna stiff arm. He's the first to take me. Yeah, 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 right there. Boom. Yeah, yeah. So for the head. Or you can hand instead of the. You can, you can use the hand, but you can't use. You don't want to go under the edge of the helmet at all, and you don't want to go too high. So he grabs your hand. What I do sometimes because I put right on their face, right, with, yeah, right with their chin or their mouth is. I'll be right here. Sometimes it starts with it's a and then first this exactly. Other times it's yeah with the shield and tear. Like that. Uh, it, can, it, it depends. I'll sh I'll, I'll show you. Like let's say I walk up to this guy and I get this hand inside, right like this, and this hand is free. I'm gonna try and push with my free hand. So if they're all but as soon as you grab his head, as soon as you go for the push, I'm gonna grab this one. If they're shorter than you, usually he can't turn to me. So, it's so it's just I, I, I'll look for whichever is easier. Yeah, for you. Okay. The first thing on a rail I always do is control his rail arm, so that I can pick. Like if he wants to run away, I'm controlling his arm. So he just leave me. So that's the first thing I do. So that one, and then I'll just look over here. I'll see maybe he's fighting me really hard over here, grabbing this arm, you know. So then I'll switch. You saw. And, I'll push it. and the guy coming from behind has to control his shoulder with the. With the that's the one. best one to control, so he can't turn that way. Yeah, yeah. So you put that on, and you can like, it's like a frame. Yeah. There, and then hands around his head. And you can, if you have just two hands free, you can put like this, and use your fist to grab, and then bicep curl. Yeah, that's all it is. Double arms. And while I'm pulling, I have to turn yeah, what against the list. Step this leg out. Mm. As you fall. So, yes, 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 yes. And you see, you, you're, you, don't, you don't ever fall. Like, you're not pulling straight down. You're yeah. pulling down. Exactly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, you, so, so eventually, you can push. Oh. Okay. 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 
Uh, once, it, once he's starting to fall, then step out of the way. Yeah. It's basically don't pull him onto your leg. But uh, like once I control, like I have control of this shoulder, can I do like this, or I always have to stay? Well, I like to try to get the head bent backwards first. So what sometimes it might be like I start here and then he bends backwards, and I come all the way to here. Oh, I've been there before. You know? yeah. Right. So if you, if you get him falling, then go ahead. Last night you, 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 you lost the break in the for five years. Yeah. For us, you were fighting there. Oh no, I wish I did. <laughs> but basically, don't take pressure on him. Don't take pressure on him. You can go up to the top of the shoulder here, potentially. But like, like right now, I can't pull on his head. I need space to leverage. Leverage. Yeah. That's it. Right? Hey, 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 hey. Wait, you know, if someone, yeah, I can tell you're gonna rip your throat out. You know? <laughs> if, if someone has the hop and tail, you know, a lot of oh, times, like you're not gonna go under onto the neck. So if you're here in practice, you're gonna be fine. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, on the chin with the palm. You know, if you have your like gloves on, you can use your fists. You know, your knuckles, like right here, like it's a punch. You know, so. But, Yep, often, yes, with it, especially with my shield, because you punch, yeah, exactly, because I'll punch and you hit with the shield, and then it slides to your hand, and then your hand can push it easily. Do I remember correctly, if I want to see a piece harder to them, when I'm there, I can turn... Yes, yep, yep. Don't follow the fact that you... Yeah, if you get your back to the rail, it helps. If you turn up, you can do it. Stop. Run. Get here. Just for that. 
all right? That's sort of the control thing he was talking about. So, uh, you know, if I'm here, when this slip happens, I like to turn to make sure we have control here, and then I can decide where we go. The only thing I want to add to this, that just so you know, when, when we do our 2v1s, we have some different uh, types of 2v1 that we do. We call this trading up in position. It's one of the 2v1s that gets missed the most, right? And from like the most basic standpoint, if Adam is fighting, just go look right here, right? If they both just, they're even fight right here. And this is my enemy. If I go like this, and Adam just leaves, we're in a better position than where we started. This was a successful 2v1, all right? This is the most basic part of it, but it's the idea of, can we take 2v1 and make it, a, can we take a 1v1, then take a second person and make it a 1v1 in a better position? This is what this is, right? The second guy might turn and help finish, but you know, he's got headlock here, and he goes like this. He can leave, right? That's good 2v1. That's a great 2v1. Maybe he can go do that to the next guy, and then that guy can go do it to the next guy. Before you know, he had three people in a position they're about to lose, all in a 1v1 loss, but it was the 2v1 that put him there, right? So when we practice this, this is just one type of it, but the theory behind of it, think about it, is a 2v1 doesn't have to be a 2v1 takedown. It can be using two people to get a better 1v1 than you had at the start. And then they go, 2v1, great 2v1. We're winning now. Cool? Yeah, the thing is, we all also have some little ego. We know what to finish to take off. Yeah, oh, you have to Thomas, be, no. No, you have to change your yeah. mind a little bit. Because I also even, want to yes, be the best, even, you know. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait. Well, yeah, so even a little okay, thing, like, uh, say, yes, Joseph, uh, you're fighting for guillotine yeah. uh, as you're yeah. facing each other, right? Yeah. So Joseph's trying to reach over, but Brett's real strong. I might come up and go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a 2v1. It lasted half a second. It was a 2v1. A lot of times, I so, do that a lot. You go. Well, in regards to I want to be the best. No. We, when we count, I, 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 I mean, the, we have to change the mindset. Yes. But when we do stats, like dominance, assists count the same as kills. So when yeah, we look, good. It's, this is these are the same. They, you know, like you yeah. score the goal or you assist the goal. Yeah. The goal wouldn't happen without it. Yeah. Without yeah. The goal. yeah. So we score them the yeah. same. The other thing, just along those lines, one of our things with the 2v1 and it's it's sort of that mind switch is realizing you know if I'm if I'm fighting here with Joseph and it's Joseph and Adam versus me, we're fighting Adam just now gets here which one of these two guys has the better opportunity to put me down this guy that I'm already fighting or that guy back there I didn't know was there right he's got the better opportunity so what's his job is his job to help him or is his job to help him I'm helping him. Yeah. That switch in your head, it's not anymore like, oh good, this dude, oh good, my teammate's coming to help me. It's, oh shit, my teammate's free, how do I set him up? Because he's gonna like, boom, knock him down, we're done, yeah, high five, next guy. Yeah. And right? this is especially relevant if you're a rail guy, because I'm, I'm a heavy rail grappler and I'm a very methodical rail grappler, so if we're squared off, I'm going to try and go for heavy head control. I'm going to try and break this guy down. And if you give me enough time, I'll kill this dude. But as soon as I see my partner wandering up behind, I'm like, oh, thank fucking God. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be so much, so much easier. So much easier. Yeah. I'm like, I get to kill that guy. Now I can go score another assist somewhere. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I could kill him on my own. You leave me alone, I will. But it's going to take me a quarter of the time to just pass him off. And and it's, but it took us time. It took us time to be like, yeah, wait, to, wait, they're yeah. not helping me. They're not coming to help me. Yeah. They're the one who can get the kill the easiest. I'm helping them. How do I set them up, right? And then, when, of course, when we take stats, because they're the same, if you're greedy with your kills, you'll score lower than every single person on the team. Because we'll go like, oh, I can't fucking help him. Boom, that guy's down, that guy's down. He's still grappling over there. You got one guy in two rounds. Good job. Like, yeah. when look good on stats. Looks like you're not willing to play with the team. Yeah. Right? And, and this, this very much plays into your mindset, again, especially when you're, you're an aggressive front grappler. You must leave space for people to help you. If I've got this guy, 
and I've got control of him, but I'm like this, right? This is very hard to assist, okay? As opposed to this, this is very easy to assist, right? Leave space for someone to save your ass and to help you, right? Or for you to help someone else finish. Don't, don't hug so close and so aggressive to him. Like, Nobody you'll sometimes see people be like, here? Yeah, you've got good control of this guy, but no one can help you. That guy's gonna leave, and you'll be like, well, fuck that guy, Brennan's doing his thing again. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> reminder that these happen when it's still five versus five. Uh, it doesn't have to rely on someone going down. The, as these guys have mentioned a few times, half a second is all you need to just get that. So there's sometimes where we'll do something as simple as I come in and push. And so that's a setup for a kill right there. Still five versus five, but that is a small two versus one that we've just created to get that kill. We call these micro two-on-ones, and they only take a second or two. Micro two-on-ones. You want to create as many as possible, because only some of them are going to hit, but they cost you nothing. Last point on this one, because it happened in the finals. Never chase someone who's lost their weapon. Right? If I'm fighting here, and Joseph loses his weapon, and Adam and myself, Adam shouldn't chase. We use that 10 seconds of time to 2v1 Brett. That is way more beneficial. Yeah. And then he's coming back with his weapon. He's like, too late. Oh, cool. He's dead. We go there. Like, we, we've all done it. We've all seen the guy lose their weapon. I've chased the dude down there. Watch video at least nine times out of ten, and I bet it's more than that. All you do is run with him until he gets to his corner. Then you run him into the rail, and then you'll sit there and grapple over there. When you put a jump. Hey, you two guys fuck up the dude standing right here. That's how you punish the guy for dropping his weapon. You fuck his friend up. It literally happens <laughs> where if, if we're fighting against Brett, we see that guy drop his weapon and Brett's fighting us, it's literally just going... Fast. Super fast. Yeah. Also so you carry a backup weapon. Everyone carry a backup <laughs> yeah. weapon. Yeah. Yeah. That, a lot of the times the stuff that looks cool, isn't good. So yeah. running after someone and checking someone into the ground and going, what up, moving on. <laughs> Looks really cool. You'll get that on a replay at the end of a tournament. But it's a highlight this, reel because it's uncommon. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> One out of ten times that happens. But you gotta say, nine times. Or well, these fly look cool. Or you don't, <laughs> even, you don't even get them down. You get to the back of the list and you check them in the list. And you're like, okay, we're now we're fighting and we suck. Yeah. Uh, let's do the Indiana Jones drill. Yeah, yeah. So now we'll break up into threes. We'll do Indiana Jones, the headlock, to, uh, the okay. guillotine. Okay. <laughs> Like you're fighting on the rail, right? Me and him are fighting, and I go. That's usually how. And then usually, so it happens by winning the the list uh, match up with yeah. Remember. Uh, Hands inside. Yep. Hands inside. I can do that immediately. And a lot of times you don't do it because you think it won't kill them. But I don't need to kill them. I need to help my house. So a lot of times I'll just run up. If I get inside, and I, and I have inside, I'm like, oh, okay. Quick. Okay. So, okay. 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 I knew it. If I go here and turn, I can do a knee. 
these are you, I might still be able to find it. Hit, but it's okay if not work. I'm going to push his hip. I still might go down. I'm going to push his hip. 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 Uh, put him in a headlock. Uh, when I come here and I go like this, my feet, I want back. And, well, I come up, go to that place, here, and I say go high. When I go here, my feet are not turned. I want to go here, hips in. So you're going to put it inside of the... It gets even worse when you push them to the center of your hips with their helmets right here. We call this the thrust of freedom. So you're going to go here, you're going here, like this, they're going straight out. It hurts super bad because their helmet is just doing that. So, and when we finish it together, so uh, do the thing, headlock, boom, I come like this, here, yeah, I get this, and I say, help me push him out, we're going to go like that. So I go to the angle of the to escape maybe? And sometimes, yeah, which uh, means lots. Okay, so I get this, and you do it, as a short person, I'm helping a tall person, Go back, go back, go back to the Okay, so I will grab uh, you get this? I'm gonna turn, turn. I grab my body like in rugby, and we post like in a almost all of straight out because they're out. They don't have to go down and use that. There's not a middle rail. Yes. 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 Comunque, quando avete visto il modo per lo scambio, cioè appena lo dicono, per lo scambio arrivo. No, Yeah, 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 like this. Vai lì, vai lì Simo. Nick hai fatto. Indiana Jones è arrivato. Possiamo chiedergli la cosa di No, no, no. Ragazzi, è il palo. Lui ha usato il palo. Sì. Se non ci fosse il palo avresti fatto una gamba. Magari avresti fatto subito la ghigliettina e poi hai fatto così. Eh, aspetta, hai fatto il diavolo Se succede col palo. Dai, non facciamo la prova della vuoto, esatto, della vuoto, perché secondo io ho sentito la pressione mancata. Ah, never di pressione, mai di lasciare la pressione. Non è che non è che ho sbagliato, perché non sarà più lungo per me. Voglio fare il E poi non passare via. E in mezzo a sì, ma io ho sbagliato. Ho fatto più di un po' di più. Lui arriva più più. Allora, cosa dobbiamo fare? Io arrivo, no? Chiamo Indiana Jones, ma quando lo chiamo io so da tutto il principio che ho usato qua, lo senti? Io piano piano, Indiana Jones, e sto già andando verso la direzione di Alessio. Vedi che sei fuori ora? Anche se non sei capito. Devi sentire, cioè è proprio il principio questo che deve stare qui, è una tier di posto vai in posto, è un'altra cosa. No, in realtà, solo questo. Perché il 
if you have a chin strap like this, like this, the helmet rotates, pushes their jaw back, and you can. It hurts. So it's not easy. No, it just hurts immediately because like they're here, they're pushing down their spine and they're fighting. So even in this position, sometimes you'll grab. It's hard because oh, it's the muscle. And it's I can push, but I feel hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I can push someone. Okay, so yeah, so you go more. They're pinned against the lift, so if we're like this, I would say kick his foot out. Oh, and then slowly he'll just no. What if, oh yeah, whatever way, if it's that one, you're going to kick it back, if it's this one, you kick it back. So a lot of times I have him pinned, and I say, just kick his leg out. And I slowly just keep dropping my weight off. Yeah, it's like, at some point, you have to even let go of the leg. I can push it. 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 No, 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 anche un po' io sento un buco di pressione e regina tranquillamente sì, però... Gli ha ragione. Vedi che... No, non devi... Ha detto che devi rimanere lì. Non ti devi togliere. Non devi togliere una pressione. Devi andare a liberare la testa. Ma tu devi continuare. Ah, questo è qua. Però così come fai là... Sì, soprattutto intanto devi bloccarlo. Poi anche... Ma lo dentro io. Ma lo Okay. 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 Yeah, so. 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 Yeah, io non solo c'è il non è il vostro c'è il kit di ciclo di compagno perché lui fa pressione ora io che okay, non alterno la pressione la Indiana Jones la sostituisco eh, la ecco e quindi io adesso continuo a e io mi sono levato sto solo qua così mi sono ci sono due tecniche sono due tecniche, una, lo faccio per liberare il mio compagno, io dico, Indiana Jones, e lui è libero e va via. Sì, però, questo è il secondo. Mi deve far bene questo, se non fai bene questo, mi deve provare E chiudi. Se vogliamo andare avanti con il disco, in due, oppure da calcio, oppure da calcio in due. Quindi, prova adesso, mi viene dalla gamba, adesso mi prova a fare, prova a fare, ok, arrivo, ok, arrivo, mi viene la donna, ah, guarda come sei, guarda come sei, se lui non si alza più, io adesso posso fare, boom, no, 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 Comunque, you can also you can also kick the leg from the side. So, yeah, yeah, so so okay, so you're pressure on his head, so you got pressure on his head, and he's close to the list. That one to the side. Yeah, exactly. Milan or set? Milan. Away away from the hips. Let's go by. Uh, 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 u
Ha fa culo Paolo! Come quello che ingazza prima! Ha appena Paolo che ha fatto Da lì come fai? È già peggio. Questa qua è uno dietro e spingi. Esatto. Non drop your knee. Ginocchio su. Io non l'avevo ancora provato da quel lato proprio. So I have to kind of maybe you guys like him. Yeah. Gamba la gamba, sapete la gamba. Buono, buono. Mm. Sexy spaccato. Ma <ride> fucitato. La nostra ballerina. Eh, bisogna, secondo me, per noi che siamo piccoletti, dobbiamo un po' collaborare sulle gambe sulle gambe. Prova anche tu per perché se proviamo a scherzarlo, cioè io conto a noi che sono pesante, preciso, non ha senso. Per parte delle persone sulle gambe. Ma noi non ha senso. The last section we're going to talk about is the 2v2. Like I said before, 1v1, 2v1, 2v2. Those are what we drill more than anything else, all right? Um, and the reason we do 2v1 before we do 2v2 is our entire strategy behind 2v2 is finding the 2v1s in the 2v2. So, right? pro tip, good support of your partners makes it much easier to beat our team. Yes, all right? So, I'm gonna, we're, we're basically just gonna show some of the smaller things that we do and then some of the larger things that we do. Because often when you think of a 2v1, you think a lot more needs to happen than it does. All right? So if, uh, what are you saying? Uh, yeah, that's perfect. So let's look at like the most basic level. All right? There's two people over here. There's two people over here. All right? But we're not going to all have the same experience inside of this fight. Right? What everyone's going to be doing to each other is different, all right? So let's say I'm playing my position right here. If I just step up and get his attention and make him attack me, possibly, boom, yeah, and then I go like, ba, boom, ba, ba, ba. This is a 2v2, right? But who am I dealing with? I'm dealing with him, right? Who does he have to deal with? He has to deal with him. Who does he have to deal with? Both of us, right? Because I've convinced this guy, yeah, 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 let's do this. What do we got? What do we got? And I'm just focusing my offense on making this guy have to pay attention to me. Right? Really basic, 
but this is a very good way to start thinking 2v1 in the 2v2. All right? If I can make him, if I can just make him keep this hand free to make sure that he can block something if I hurt him, he's now fighting my partner one handed. I don't need to do anything more than that to be an effective partner in this situation because I have made sure that my guy isn't hitting my person and I've made sure that his guy is paying attention to me at least somewhat. And this does, this does two big things. First of all, if I can't use this outside arm, I cannot by definition get a suicide grip. I can't hook my hands up because this is here. So any attacks he makes, he's probably going to survive. Second thing, I can't really sink any good grips over here to do any attacks because the minute I do it, he just knocks him the fuck off. Oh yeah, do you go, go deep on that side? As soon as I like reach over here, he's just going to hit it, he's going to pull it off. He can even reach over and just physically pop it off. So the big thing is he's going to attack me. The second thing is he's going to prevent me from getting outside grips. So strategically, there are things that we run. We might run a play where we have something pre-planned, but as a rule, if we're playing slow and methodical, when we walk forward, our belief is until this position sees an opening, says like, oh, I need to press on this guy, or this person's not looking, until I see an opening, my number one job is to support this person's battle. Whatever he needs to continue to be winning his battle is what I'm gonna give him. Generally, step one is make sure that that guy isn't beating my partner up. Step two is influence him in any way I can, right? Can I fight out here and then go and kick that leg out, right? And not fall over? Uh, <laughs> right? Can I just fit in like a, oh, we're moving, like a hard punch, just one, just enough for him to be like, oh, I gotta be ready if he punches again, right? Just the mindset switch from I'm fighting this guy in an offensive way and trying to kill him to I'm defending myself from these two guys means I'm losing. Right? And it's, it's the same mindset switch here. The amount of times two guys walk up, especially in the newer teams, and we go like, okay, that's his guy, that's my guy. Let's fight. It's not what it is. It's the two of us versus the two of them. Even with the two-handed weapon, halberders, real good halberders hit that guy, a lot of times they just sit here and go, yep. And now, and this guy has to go, and in between, they're 2v1. So it's very most halberds are which means I can step up and he's not gonna want to close enough, which means it's it's a giant slow moving thing. My hands are free. I will block that and we will keep making this guy's life miserable. Now, if he's willing to step forward and like defend his space, which better halberders are, but by and large, most of them would give space as I press, right? They want to be right here, and I can really focus on like, I'm going to fuck this dude up in between each one of his strikes. A lot of times when we practice, sometimes as a halberder, I'll switch to actually covering my guy. In between doing these, I'm going to go back to actually blocking him or taking this angle of attacking. But the, the one other thing I say I'm going to say to you is, uh, one of the things I think of is, let's say that he is stepping up and swinging him. If I just block him, in my head, every swing is a little bit out of his gas tank. And it doesn't take anything from me. So I go like, oh, if he's swinging hard, like how many does he have? All right, there's five. There's six. I'd be getting tired by now. I don't know. He's probably better than me at swinging a halberd. But like, I know in my head, I'm like, uh, he, he can't keep it up forever. Let's like, when's it gonna? So I'll sit there and block for a while. On the <coughs> other side of that, if Joseph and myself are here, Adam swinging in, you just wait for one swing. Right. Right. So using the two versus one things that we just did, or the things that we're about to talk about, I will block. Wait for Adam to start pulling back, or the pole to start swinging back and then I'll go. Because now there's no threat to me, there's no threat to my partner, I come in, boom, I get, right? And so that, that is where you can use your small two versus ones, where I've dealt with this, he or they have to get distance to swing, so I might have a tiny bit of time 
to then go, oh, okay, gut punch, head rip, whatever, feed over this side, and then that way, we've dealt with this, I'm dealing with this now. This is behind me, we've got that micro two on one done. It's like a video game, there's, there's downtime. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah, a second or okay. second and Dark half Souls, right? Don't between get each hit. So you attack between the hits. Mm -hmm. And I I'm, close distance I'm, in the same time. Cool. And I'm gonna be perfectly honest, most halberders can't swing worth a goddamn. You can just ignore them. Right? If someone swings at you and they're like, uh, I'm like, why did I even bother blocking that? Don't bother blocking it. You can walk forward and do whatever you're doing. Eh, they should learn to swing. Next time we'll get more you know? Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you have a jank, you're used to that. Yeah, yeah I'm, no, it's not on the <laughs> So, uh, so this is what I kind of taught as the most simple type of 2v1, but it is also the one that is missed the most. Because you can't, when you look at video, it's so hard to tell that the 2v1 is happening. Uh, in fact, before I go forward, because it's the exact same thing, we do the same thing with the center when we're running a halberd. And by that I mean, oh, yeah. is if I can hold this, uh, and then if you can set that over there. So if this is a three person, all right, I'm gonna try to gain this exact same advantage, but now with the center involved as well. Now let's say I've got a halberd and the person across from me is totally okay with just uh, standing off. Like, I don't want him to hit anything, right? I don't want to hit anything, so just standing. So I go, okay, cool, and then I move close enough. And guess what this guy does automatically, because now I'm in range of hitting him, right? Did this guy threaten anyone else? No, this guy's still just making sure I can't do anything. But simply by positioning and possibly being like, oh man, that, this album's gonna hurt, I swear to God, I swear to God it's gonna hurt. Now suddenly that guy has to deal with me too. Now we have two people who don't have two people's full attention on them. Because I've drawn half his attention, even though I'm not even fighting. We're not doing anything. I'm just like, what if? You never know. It could happen, right? And now suddenly we're getting that 2v1 we want because this guy can't actually be in this fight. He can be halfway there, but he knows if he really commits to turn, this may be dropping, and we've all had, we can say halberds don't hit very hard. The problem is they don't hit very hard until they do. Uh, and you never know when that until they do is gonna come. So it's just, it's best to not get hit by them. Uh, that's my belief, but you know. I get hit a lot Yeah, it's, it's great, it's great when your partner drops the right. <laughs> But anyway, so we're, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna go look at, we're gonna look at some more defined 2v1s and how we set them up. But it's really important to realize, because you don't always see it in the tape, it looks like a 2v2. And just it's not. If we're quick, doing our job right, the, it's not. The thing that he's talking about, you'll sometimes hear us refer to as a zoning three, right? Or positional advantage three. So if you ever hear us say, oh, he's zoning or he's positional advantage, what he's doing is he's using his position to create that two on one somewhere else or to take someone out while still threatening someone else. So you're controlling a zone rather than just controlling a person. So a little bit of you always try to create two as well. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Fighting people one on one is a sucker's game. Right. Yeah. And, and, and of course, we go back to the one thing that we train more than anything else is one v one. That's true. Like because individual, if we can just all win our fight, everything gets better. Uh, and if we could just like, if I just walk up, throw someone on the ground, now we're in a five v four, and two v ones get really easy. We don't have to talk about micro two v ones because we just got an extra person. So we definitely train the one v one a lot. We want to use the teamwork to assist takedowns as much as possible. So even if I am 100% sure that Brett is going to easily kill the guy that he's fighting, if I'm a free person and there's nowhere better to be, I will come assist Brett, not because I don't think he can do it, but strictly because I want him to burn as little energy as possible because we've got to do this all day. And if we can finish it three seconds faster, then we have an extra person Moving to a 2v1 three seconds faster. We start our roll. Right, the roll, the roll happens fast. And the difference is when you're 1v1ing, it's skill versus skill. It's not always your knowledge of Hoover. In this 2v1 and teamwork, that's your knowledge of Hoover and playing the game. And you can scale that as high as you want, absent of your actual skill. Like they're two different skills, right? So you can just be really good at playing the game. So, uh, I think the last thing we're going to go over is let's look at the ways that we get bigger 2v1s because uh, they're a lot easier to see. 
Um, the biggest thing, you know, you can go out and do this yourself. We have some set things that we know as a team we're going to do. The biggest thing is we switch targets between the two fighters a lot, and we know that we're going to do it. So the idea is if we're, like, if we walk straight up like this, boom, and Joseph just now immediately sidesteps, boom, and I come here, right? There's a split second where... He is still focused on Joseph, and my hands are on him. Did you talk about it before you talk? Yeah. Yes, yes. You need to write. Yeah, there's a couple, so there's a couple things that we have that are, if you see it, do it, I'll react. Because there's a few things, like I love people crashing down. It was a little harder with this mud, but the last tournament I was at, I did it at the beginning of things all the time. I love something we call the hop and bump, which is the sort of end of the rail. And if he can just press here, boom, I go, Right, and it's like a, I, I have my partner, a known thing, if you see it go, I'll react, I don't care. Right, so we might set up some other stuff, we might set up going slow, but if that's one for me, I just tell them, see it go, I'll react. Uh, so a, a lot is preset, a lot of it is we decide, okay, hey, let's go for this. We might audible out of it, if, you know, if we might uh, change out of it, if there's, uh, the look is really weird. Like the two people walking up are like in a line and we're like, oh, that's, it's not gonna work. So then we'll call it off. But a lot of the initial movements we preset. Yeah, and it's, it's you know, if you could set it up and you try and it works, then great, it works. If it doesn't, then you go back to that, you know, okay, I'm creating the, the, the 2v1 here, right? Well, yes. Uh, in the, that's one, one of the things that we do to decide how we're going to do this is based on distance here. Um, and we will punish based on, like, a lot of halberders are going to split. This makes it much easier for us to do things that punish through this way, to drive here and move this way, right? Some people want to stack closer. You have to deal with them differently. Um, we, every top team... Like every seated team in this tournament, we scouted in video, made a video, and made everyone aware of who they were. Right? Um, because you need to know when you're going up against Grimaldi that their center is phenomenal. Right? Their center is their best fighter by a long shot. And they got a lot of good fighters. Their center's just amazing. Right? So we walked into it knowing that. And we were like, so what if we just make sure he can't fight? Right? Watch it both rounds. One of us grabbed his axe, sat in the fucking corner, and just watched the fight. And to be clear, that wasn't, oh, Craig, you're going to do this, or oh, Brett, you're going to do this. It was, hey, guys, here's what that guy looks like. Here's his loadout. Whoever if he engages you, grab his shit, lead against the rail. Yep. Craig played center. First round, Craig grabbed axe, sat there. They had a timeout. They realized what we were doing. So they immediately had two go to Craig. The guy crashed down on me. Turns out I made the video. Uh, I <laughs> couple of made the video. I went, oh, here we go, grabbed his axe, walked straight to a corner, and then just went like, y'all guys, he's not going anywhere, y'all guys went. And Brett, to be clear, is our fastest DPS on the team. He is most likely person to kill someone in the first 30 seconds. That's fine. We, we knew that the rest of our team could win as long as we shut down their win condition. Doesn't matter who did it, shut down their win condition. That goes back to what Jake said about removing your ego out of the fight. Because the objective of Boohard is your team will win. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't necessarily feel good about the fact that I got a chance to go up against one of the best fighters in the sport, and I held his axe and sat in a corner and literally just was like, "We don't get to play." Like, and I don't feel particularly good about it. But hey, great job, guys! You fucking did it. Like, high fives all around, right? So, uh, you know, so when we talk about the pre-call plays, it's worth noting that we do scout a lot to make sure we know what's happening. The other end of it is don't overcomplicate it because all plans go to shit 30 seconds after the <laughs> That's also the one. <laughs> on, on all of those plays, et cetera, everything that we've talked through here for teamwork, I live in Australia. I don't interact with these guys like, well, this year I've done it quite a few times, but uh, um, a lot of the time I'll interact with them once a year. Maybe once every two years. He only gets to practice with kangaroos. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, if your team is spread out, so if your team is two hours from training, one of the easiest ways is to either sit down, 
have uh, an online call with them. I was trying to avoid Discord, but Discord, if you know what Discord is, or... Yeah. Okay, cool. cool. I know some people will, but I'm not sure. Anymore. But have a call with them, share your computer screen and talk through it. Or, uh, Brett and myself, uh, Brennan as well, we'll sit down and make videos. <coughs> and, and don't just be like, yeah, look how good we did. Be critical. The things that work are important. The things that didn't work are more important. Yeah. Be critical. If, if, and don't take it personal. It's yeah. super important if y'all don't do this. I take stats after every one of our tournaments. I, I know what? Last one. We don't have video. The video <laughs> stream went down. I'm not going to take stats on four matches when we got... The point is, the video's out there somewhere. I'm waiting for it to get uploaded, and you better believe the stats will be there. Uh, anyway, I do stats. I do every single takedown, every single person who falls. I talk about, I look at how they fall. I look at the technique for where they, how they fell. And it doesn't take that long. It's not super fast, but like, I can go through our things, get everything done in probably two and a half hours. You may not get a lot of info the first time you do it, but you will quickly find patterns begin to emerge and it becomes much easier to figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are when you start going like, hey, did you know that like over 50% of the time you go down, it's to the same fuck up, right? And if in a match, you only, if in one tournament you only go down twice, it's hard to realize that a pattern's happening. Um, but then on top of that, after every tournament, we have team review where we go like, what happened? Like, what did we do good? What did we do bad? Hey, we won this one handily, but these two guys, the two of us over here, were totally not on the same page. That guy stayed up for the entire round because we couldn't get on the same page for how to take him down. We have to fix that, right? It doesn't matter that we won. We need to figure out what we can make better so that when the people, when it really matters, when the people are really fucking good, we don't have those miscommunications. And I cannot stress this enough, and, and we've learned this empirically from watching lots of tape, the thing that you think you did in the tournament is wrong. <laughs> Your memory of what happened in the tournament is wrong. You do not remember what happened accurately. You do not remember that takedown you got. You do not remember how you went down. Your emotional experiences in the moment cloud your perceptions of what happened. The tape is the law. You watch the tape, that's what happens. We, we had a tournament in January, the World War, where we looked at our stats, and not as any individual person did bad, but as a team we had, our, our assist went down a lot. So what were we working on? Well, we did a whole season of working on individual skills, and we forgot our teamwork stuff. So our assist went down, stuff like that. It just it helps them. And then, and then from a coaching standpoint, when we realized that, guess what we did for the next three lots months, two, two three months? Lots of two just two v ones, two v twos, two v ones, two v twos. From January, because across. you know, I can, I've got this list of tournaments where I can show us what the average number of assists we get over a tournament is, and now suddenly we have half that. Like, okay, we still, we still did well, but like, what happened here, and like. A lot of times, the rounds were taking a little bit longer. We were getting into longer, more drawn-out fights with single people. The efficiency was going down. We got to get our shit back together on our team more. We spent too much time working on one-on-one. -on -one. So, like, and those are the things that emerge looking at stats and why it's very useful, especially from a coaching standpoint or if you lead practice or anything like that. You can look at, like, actively be like, guys, this is a thing we don't do well. Statistically, I can say, I mean, we can say we do whatever, but we're not, it's not happening in a tournament. Let's spend some time working on it. Uh, that's oh, yeah, you want to go over scanning for fitness? Yeah, we just talked about that this morning. Yeah, yeah. Talking about yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, friends, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get everyone to shove over this side. So go over this side, and then I'll pick some people out for foot pitch. I'll get you some. It's the B and J duo. Big B. And then I just need two over this side real quick. Two people.
Okay, so, um, uh, right, looking around, figuring out what's going on when you're fighting. One of the, the simplest things to do, but one of the things that a lot of people don't do and they get caught out for it. They'll get checked because they're fighting here, not looking anywhere here and just get annihilated, right? So one of the easiest things to do to improve how well you're fighting is focus on scanning. I call it scanning. Do you guys call it scanning? Yeah. yeah. Yes! Uh, <laughs> uh, so. You taught me that, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you. Uh, looking around, right? And vision, really important. Now, when uh, we go over a, a core thing like this, so looking around and getting information, it's not like you can do it once. It's not like I tell you here going, okay, you need to look around. And you go, those guys? from overseas, they told us to look around, we'll do it. That doesn't work, right? You need to, like I was doing with you before, you need to call each other out when you're training when you do this, right? So as a, as a preface for this. Now, what I mean by this is, look around when you're fighting. Don't just solely focus on the person in front of you. Make sure you're looking around. <coughs> How long do you reckon it takes a fat ass like myself to run from here to here? Three it's days. about two seconds, right? So, if you're not looking around every two seconds, you have vulnerabilities. Every two seconds, okay, cool. We look around, we're good. We look around, we're good. If I'm fighting someone here, I don't need to be looking at... <laughs> okay, yeah, cool, I can throw it. No, no, everything should be done with touch. So I'm looking here, I'm going, oh, okay, cool. Now I can go for something, because you can feel it. You should be training enough that you know those positions just by arms. Alright, can I get you guys to advance somewhat? Yeah. Just to be so, you guys are all good? Awesome. Now, when we are set up... So when we are set up like this, our sight lines are to our advantage. Johnny doesn't need to look at the crowd. He doesn't need to be over here going, man, do I look sick right now? Uh, this is awesome. We're fired. So he doesn't need to pay attention to this. Same with Brennan over there. Right? As soon as we start moving out, we need to pay attention to more finishing with the center. So to help us with that, when we start out, when things start to get really hectic and running around, we tear back. So, Brett here, he stepped back, so he no longer has to pay attention to this, he pays attention to this, right? Less to look around, he's fine. If someone runs behind, that's a different story, we'll go over that. And again, finally, when we're in the center, if Adam is stepped, if he's got a massive ego, which I believe centers sometimes should have, uh, but if he's got a massive ego, he's like, I can take this guy, I can kill him, and he pushes straight in, guess what? Boom, boom, right? Yeah. He now has to pay attention to more and more and more and more. Yeah. I don't have eyes in the back of my head nor my helmet. I can't go like, oh sick, these guys are doing that. So, you've got to be mindful of this stuff. And this is why, when you lay out like this, I'm not going to say we do it every single time because we don't. We don't. This is just a nice setup to demonstrate we are using our sight lines here to our advantage. When we are concave rather than convex, to our advantage. If we can draw their center in, so if we push together now, and now we have, okay, cool, I can destroy you. Suddenly, what happens? Yeah. And he can only see one of them at a time. Yeah. So if we go back, we push back here. So we've got to make sure that we are constantly looking around. This is all about sight lines. Now, we have talked about sight lines, let's get into scanning. Once we, we'll focus on here just real quick, if we get into grapples. So once we get into grapples, Brett's looking around. Again, we want every two seconds, at minimum, okay? What you need to balance here is when you're fighting someone, if you're looking around every two seconds, Okay, I'm safe, but you may not be able to concentrate on the person in front of you. Sometimes you need five seconds of concentration 
I'm going to kill them. That's A-OK. -okay. That's a risk that you need to learn to take sometimes. Also, everyone gets spine protection because it saves your life and you can just focus and not get hit. <laughs> it's also really important to realize you don't get to focus for five seconds unless you're in a place where you could take it. Like, I don't get to be like, all right, I think five focused seconds. That's all I need, five focused seconds because in two seconds I'm going down. But maybe I get to go like, Okay, I need five focus seconds. Five focus. The worst case scenario, I go, fuck that book. Right? It's not, uh, I'm on the ground. So, like, edu educated educated risks. I have, I have to this say, say the field is not the place to fuck around. I, I was stupid yesterday, also. I did have to do kind of luck. Make a take time on the side. With the back to the inside, I thought, Whoa. I love you, man. Me, <laughs> 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 yes, the first time you even, so that's the danger. Yes, yes. Even in, when making a decision, <laughs> do it quickly because I need to look when something happens. For instance, if I'm, say this guy's going to come off the rail and check me, but I'm attacking this person, when, say, uh, or I'm going to attack that guy, I need to leave him very quickly so I can see what happens. So I'm not going to, like, kind of, like, fuck around and do this a little bit. When I get to here, I'm gonna go as quickly as I can. I'm gonna go boom, boom, make contact. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna immediately turn and look at him. And I'm like, he's cool. If he dives, like maybe he goes forward, I might just say, fuck this guy and go check that guy on the rail over there. But I need to do it quickly and immediately turn and look. So, the reason why I want to bring this up is because, one, it, everyone should be aware of it. It is one of the core things that you need to teach to all of your newbies. You need to know if you are a fighter. You can't just ignore it. And I'll give you two examples. And it's not because they were here today. Well, it kind of is, but it's because we were just watching video of them to figure out how to beat them. Grimaldi uh, at the World Cup in May. How did they lose their first round? Sorry, uh, third, third round. round. Third round. round. Third round. Yeah. Anyone know? No one knows? Boosted? Okay. Grimaldi versus White Company. Yeah, I sorry. My bad. Yeah, there's a lot of rounds. Okay, I'm if good. Adam goes in, this is their third round. Adam goes in, he pushes, he starts fighting. Adam is their center. Adam isn't paying attention to anyone apart from the person in front of him. What does White Company do? Oh, cool. Boom. Suddenly they've lost their third round, right? Because of that one, White Company are very good at two versus ones and not going down. Boom. Four versus five, there's no coming back from that. They lose, right? First? Yeah, first round we did. We get a disarm over here, we get a kill. We have a disarm over here, Brett runs back. The polearm user, yeah, starts hitting Joseph. Not looking around, I run across and just check him straight away. Boom, suddenly that round is locked in, we're good. Right? How do we stop all of that? We look around, right? Very simple thing. Don't get tunnel vision, don't get horny for kills. <laughs> Make sure you are ingraining in yourself that you go BOOM! BOOM! And you look around because anyone could be running around and killing you at any point. Two seconds, if you have a halberd and I'm coming up to hit this guy, one, look, one, two, look again. It's two, one, two strikes, look, one, two strikes, look. Alright, so uh, I want to just talk about quickly people running into the backfield and then I want to talk about a drill that just to show you what you need to do not in terms of this is the only thing you need to do but how you have to constantly remind people so we talked about scanning we talked about looking around if this team knows okay we need to scan every two seconds we need to look around every two seconds if Adam runs in the backfield I'm betting this team now know that. They're looking around, right? They're aware of it. But suddenly, the amount of distance they have to be aware of has drastically increased from 90 degrees to 180. This guy here has to pay attention to Brett and Adam, right? Yeah. Even, even if Brett is paired up against these guys, he can still get loose, come over, micro 2v1, move off, right? 
And you didn't do anything. I, and I, I want yeah, just, yeah. just to just to tie this. That's a problem. Tie this. Keep saying there. Just to tie this into what we were just talking about. Who does he have to pay attention to? This guy right here. Suddenly he has to drop his back to the rail, right? We talk about trying to get the two v ones and the two v two. He didn't engage at all. He's not fighting him, but he can't just square up and fight me. Guess what we did? Here's our two v one that we wanted in the two v two. He's not, he's not even part of it. And we're the 2v1 and the 2v2. Because you have to keep your back. Yeah. Right yeah. And, and sometimes, if he follows me, a lot of times, I'm just kind of tentative. If he charges me, I'm here. And he knows I'm messing with this guy. I'll go. And then still, 2v1, I got two. And I'm like, OK. Here we go. Here we go. So he is still impacting these fights, even if he's that far away. He's making these guys have to be aware. Now, a lot of us already know this, but to, to put it into practice, to put it into process, we need to do that. Um, now, that's not necessarily the center does it always. We've talked a few times about if Brett pushes in or if Joseph pushes in, again, this guy has to pay attention to 180 degrees again. So it's much easier to throw him because he's having to look suddenly everyone here has to look around for twice as long because it goes from 90 to 80. They might have 90 degrees peripheral vision inside their wolf rib or whatever helmet might have that. But as soon as you go past 180, they have to start moving their head. You get those tiny little bit of lapses in uh, concentration that you can take advantage of. Okay. I don't want to go too much in depth. Scanning like runs into everything and it ebbs and flows into things. But. I, I'll, I'll say just last thing so that we make it a little more real. If y'all go back and watch the video, a way you can see this directly happen in one of our matches. I'm in like a 1v1 with this guy. Jake gets free and he's finished. Jake walks up over there. He has to sit back and he, he looks that way to see Jake. And the second he looks that way, I go, look that way. Oh. And immediately sit down into this. That wasn't there if he was looking at me. But we created a position where he had to look this way. Now he has to pay attention. Now I can make a big move that he doesn't react to in time because he looked the other direction. Right? It wasn't an option while he was looking at me. He'd have been like, oh, and so the second I jump up, it's a big move, but he doesn't like it. The second he goes, what's that? There's no reaction. Easy thing. All right. And if so, he doesn't, if he doesn't look your way, Jake has a headroom. Yep, right? Like so, so it's it's, it's sort of you're yeah, setting it up one, one or the other. Yeah. So how do we train this? One of the best ways I've found is inside a two versus one because you have so many people to pay attention to. So a two versus two. Let up. So these guys, let's go into a quick two versus two real quick. Just just getting hands on. Now we can look around. I can be uh, the coach for this, and I can be like, okay, so five. How many fingers am I holding up? Three. Everyone has to call it out, right? And I move. So everyone has to look around, and I'm holding up fingers, and they have to call it out. Three, four, five, and I move around. So it makes it so they get used to playing with hands. Oh, okay. Four, three, one, right? So you're looking around. If if you don't have that, slash you want to train, uh, train something a little bit different, we bring in punishment. <laughs> Adam, Adam is on no one's team. He, does, he, he doesn't care whose team these guys are on. He's going to hit everyone. What you guys have to do is turn and look at him. If he sees no one looking oh if you don't look at him within two seconds three seconds whatever he deems now I, i'm not saying you'll just boom it's when in soft kit we give light taps and whatnot you really don't want to injure people but it's more of a you messed up oh, okay you messed up because again as you start grappling you will get tunnel vision you won't realize it we have to make sure yeah we have to make sure that these become part of your subconscious. So you're subconsciously going. So as you guys grapple, Adam, if you're on the lookout, people aren't looking. Yeah. And he can he can just move around and as long as people are looking at him, no one's getting hit. 
The goal isn't necessarily to throw people down here. You can, it's fine, but they get back up. The goal is to make sure we're always looking. And we have some kind of punishment or some kind of game to make it so they're aware. Easiest one to start off with is having a coach. These guys are fighting. You say to them, okay, you guys fight. For the next two minutes, I'm going to be walking around. Every two to three seconds, I'm going to be throwing my hand up. And you have to call out numbers, right? People get sneaky and they wait for the other person to call it out and they just call it out. So they'll just focus. This guy will say one, they'll be like one. So you have to pay attention to that. Um, this is also just a great drill for your, for your three because your three gets an opportunity to be like, how can I get around to where those people aren't looking at me and hit them when they're not paying attention? This also goes from what we talked about earlier about practice and soft kit. We do full form, no power. So if I, I'm gonna do the Brennan because I practice with Brennan. I'm a two-handed act halberder. I'm gonna go, we're here, I'm gonna go. And after the first one, I'm gonna start reacting Sorry. to it as though he's really hitting me, right? right? I'm gonna respect it because the entire point is he's not hitting the shit out of me, so Honest thank you. practice. They will try to respect me that I'm a halberder. And I'm trying to be, I'm not going to go, I'm going to, and I'm going to block or I'm going to move or I'm going to let it impact whatever I'm doing with this grapple. So he's getting an honest experience. He's getting an honest experience. I'm getting an honest experience. All right. So the last little thing that I want to say, because people wear glasses, who is blind inside their helmet? They don't have glasses on. They can't see anything. Yeah, we got one, two. <laughs> That's weird, my gym is filled with them. They, everyone's an engineer, so they have glasses, they can't see anything. Uh, so when we do this, sometimes you'll be fighting with people who need glasses. That's fine. Get a soft sword and a soft shield, and that's all it is. Sword, shield, the bigger targets, people can make out what they are. You need to play to the disadvantages that sometimes people have. Also, just from my team's experience, if you're blind without your glasses, Please don't use a halberd. <laughs> <laughs> we got a guy on our team who won't put him down and he has fucked me up so many times. Son of a... Rub back in. So I'll be Charles. I'll be Charles. Grab guns, Oh my god, don't do it. Charles would be like... Give it in. <laughs> Please just don't! Don't eat me! <laughs> okay, just swing at the blur. Any, any questions before we wrap this up? This part at least? <laughs> Alright, where's the Yeah, we were dumb. We're much we're much less stupid now. <laughs> so, so, so uh straight five used to be Okay. Used to be. Used to be it. So if we go into straight five here, boom. So this used to be what people used to form up into. 2015, 2016 started to degrade 2017. I think Russia kind of debuted it. 2016, 2017. This used to be how people lined up because one, people didn't really want to use the list. They thought, no, cowards use the list. We don't want to do that. We just want to fight and hit. Coward. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as people developed throughout fighting and realized what the meta is, there's everyone, or well, some people know what the meta is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so they developed what the meta is. They started to figure out, oh, we don't actually need him here to defend this gap because this person here can defend against those. He can defend against three. So if we move over to here and we start focusing on the flanks and we just degrade this flank and push it forward, guess what? He's screwed because he has to look around even further than 180 now. He has people targeted on his back. So over time, <laughs> it's now turned into two, one, two as the strategy. And as we've talked about today, now we get teamwork, teamwork here, and teamwork here, which we haven't gone over to a huge extent, but this person can move their center, right or left, depending on what we want to do. So say 
if these guys are going to do an aggressive play, so Brett's going to push in, we don't want their centre anywhere near that. We don't want him to influence it. So what Adam might do is either... Oh yeah, you will start the fight. we we'll start the fight and yeah. this way. Yeah. So you'll notice uh, during yesterday, Adam floated over here. And this wasn't being aggressive, we were just grinding here. These guys were. So we don't want the centre to have access to their backs, right? So remember how Brett was saying, I have five seconds of being able to grind like this? That's because we've moved their centre yeah. further yeah. over we, this way. Yeah, we, yeah. Call, we call start yeah. fight and we just... Yeah. Normally I'm following. That's what we did. Yeah, that's what we did yesterday. So you can start manipulating their centre by your centre. Or, okay, we want this play to be aggressive. What's the key to that? Adam's running through. He wraps round. These guys can clearly see where Adam is. Okay, we can be aggressive. Because Adam is now physically blocking their centre from impacting them. Green, green. For the centre, uh, maybe for this kind of tactic, is it useful to draw the attention from the one of the side of the flag, maybe by hitting, pushing, and then going around. So maybe he, he just goes through. Well, he doesn't get seen, maybe because so one is focused. He goes through. I don't care. And you I mean don't... like attacking you? Sorry. If I'm the center and I attack you. Yeah. Saying, like as you come through, just give him maybe a hit. Just a little push and Sometimes. so I so I catch the glass of you and I. Well, if you don't see him, he's going to all, kill you. Okay? Yeah. Then he can generally come back and kill you. Yeah. Do it for so like that's almost a mistake yeah. by you because he can go back to there and you're still like clueless he's there. Yeah. He's break back this way. Oh, I'm going that way. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. But it's I won't look at you because if I run up and I'm like, yeah, I can't see him <laughs> and he's gonna fucking check me. And a lot of times if I'm running by, even if you come off the rail. I'm gonna still look at this guy, and if you come at me, I'm gonna just avoid. Whenever we talk about going to the backfield, the assumption is that people are paying attention to you because that's what they should do. Mm. The corollary is if they don't pay attention to you, kill them. It's better. Yes. So maybe it's better yeah, if we don't pay, pay, pay attention yeah. if they, at all. We don't want you to pay attention. We're okay. assuming you will because that's the kind of the worst case. But if you don't look at us when we're in your backfield, we're just going to kill you. Uh, that, because I, I think it's, I, I wanted to say this one point, but just I got done this a lot. What was it? Uh, I don't know how many of your teams have calls. So many of these like blind side, like someone's running up from behind. We have like one call that everyone on the team, including the people outside the list say, which we yell cross. And if you hear someone yell cross, you yell cross. And all that means is someone on the other team is running across the field. If you don't see them, it's probably you that's about right. to get checked. Like, so if I'm doing something and I hear cross, 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 I immediately know something's coming. Or example, cool. if, if, everyone. if Jake's on the bench, your bench guys can see the entire field. So what'll happen is, maybe I'm running, and I hear Jake say it, cross, cross, cross! And then they'll call cross. Cross, cross, and cross. Turns and looks. Again, we are deaf inside our helmets. Outside voice. Yep. Everyone says. Uh, one last thing. A lot of people in Booher uh, play the position of they say I'm a runner or something. I'm a runner too. 95% of my training is fighting on that rail. Because what happens? I'm running around. We're fighting eventually. Maybe I run over here. He comes over and grapples me. So we're like we end up on the rail. Guess what? We're both rail fighters now. Yeah. We're both rail fighters. I can't just be like, oh shit, uh, got to run again. Yeah, yeah. and we, we cannot, cannot do it, and he kills my guy wherever. We, we cannot stress this enough. The rail is the sport of Booher. The rail is the sport. So things happen in the field, that's great. But if your team does not have a list, build a section of rail. If you get an eight foot section of rail, a corner, and another eight foot section of rail, you can do everything you need to to train. Have a rail, have a tabletop. The list is the sport of Booher. Big of a tool as any weapon, any armor. This you can do so much. And now, especially with the tabletop, this is where the two v ones became more valuable because you can't hook. Before you could just hook. Now it takes so much more time. Now you, that doesn't happen, so you can get things can happen very fast with kills. You can be much more aggressive with your with your two v ones. I was wondering about something about the center. So if you as a center have an alba and not like a shield and falcon or whatever. You have more rage in theory. So, 
like it's different like I've seen that when the centers yeah like you know have halberds having more range they maybe they can influence more the 2v2 yes they yeah. have a bit a larger amount of threat so they they can do that where they split attention and they they do not necessarily have to run on the side of the rail to and influence what we do a lot much, with yes. with our center his name's Sean he uses a he's oh. got the the pointy face when he uses a two-handed axe a lot of times I'm playing two Sean will bring this person over to the fight and then we'll start fighting if this guy dives him I'll come off the rail and attack this guy or if Sean has a two-handed axe and our goal is to fight kill this person Sean will walk over here right and then this guy goes to attack he doesn't see me over there and I cross check at him or or he's like this this guy comes into the backfield like he charges me Sean walks over this way I blindside him that's our op one of our opening plays and worst case scenario maybe I don't check that person but so you're not the center and the, well he's sometimes so no I'm, I usually play center but I also play that position he's okay. a, he's a because two three rotate. my objective is mobility right okay. so say in the case Joseph is our halberder and I'm here okay, Joseph walks over there I cross check this guy uh, move in and I just, I just like hit him worst case scenario he turns and looks at me right now you and I are fighting well, well we are fighting and then our halberder goes over there or over there the point is I remove uh, you remove the obstacle for your halberder because the issue is, he's got a two-handed axe, he wants yeah. to swing it, you don't want him to get grabbed. So you just move a piece in, grapple that guy, he's free up. So sometimes you have to take the risk to leave him alone against two to uh, protect we, the... We train for this bullshit specifically. Yeah. Like, so, I just assume that he's going to help me until he sees a cross check, and at that point, he's going to like tap me on the shoulder and jet, and I'm going to be like, okay guys. Real easy, real easy one. Thanks. <laughs> ah. Yeah, that happens, or he's defending his ally, right? If I throw a shot and I fake, he goes to block. Yeah. I and and he's going to come block. back. Because you don't want him to get wrecked, I, maybe. Yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe. But this is, this is all how you uh, feel your team, right? Yeah. He knows he's going to be in two versus one. So he knows he needs to have the stamina, the strength, the ability to keep people off him for short periods of time in those two versus one. And we typically train for 60 seconds because it's way more than you should need. <laughs> I should be able to tank you two, not necessarily kill you, although that's a possibility. I should be able to tank you two and keep you from leaving or killing me for 60 seconds. And we train that as a drill. So fight to your advantages. If you have faster people, a lot of us can't throw as fast as Brett. A lot of us can't tango as well as Johnny. So having those abilities, we want to use them, but then we also want to use our other fighters, how they're good, right? So he'll probably be better in a two versus one than Adam, just because of height and size. So we can use that, boom, but Adam's faster, so cross check. So we use that to our advantage. And if you watch our film, those guys on that side, on the left flank, tend to set up things together pretty often. My flank, my two tends to work with me a little bit and then leave and go kill someone and eventually come back. Okay. That's that's super common. Cool. All right. I think that's everything we have for you guys. Yeah, we are at time. We really appreciate everyone's attention. There's about 40 people here. We love that. Again, we're Dominus, we're Warlords, we're Vagabonds, we're Kraken. I'm Adam. <laughs> that's all right. I'm Ken. Thanks a lot. I'm Ken and my Ken is back. <laughs> There's an app, uh, Armored Combat Academy. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Right. So this, our captain, who's broke his shoulder, is not here. Uh, he's he's put together an app that that trains this and much more. Yeah. Check it out if you're interested. It's like BJJ fanatics, we put training videos on there yeah. on our app. Armored Talks about all the different everything things. Everything we just talked about is on the app. So if you need a refresher. Where's that podcast? Like podcast. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 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 uh,